that. It's asking me which library would you like to open? If you can choose the one that says um, the final cut training. It, it might not have um, one ready to open. It's, um, you might have to create. If, if you, yeah, so like, for example, these are all my previous libraries. So all the videos that I've worked on before. Um, what, what I'm gonna do is just create a new library. So in Final Cut, the library is the highest level, uh, highest level of um, filing. So what I'll do is create new. And again, like don't do this right now, resist the urge to do it right now. I'm gonna, we'll have time so that you can do it on your own. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new library. And then I'm gonna call this one um, Waterfall. I hit save. Okay, so when I've created a library, uh, and you can look, if you, let me, if I zoom in, does this work? No, it doesn't work on this. Who? Okay, I'm just going to drag this out bigger so you can see what the file names are. Um, so located on the upper left hand side over here is where you're going to see all your uh, different libraries and events. So the highest level is the library and the icon is represented by these four little stars kind of stacked on top of each other. If I click on this uh, little carrot, it will show me the event that is nested under that library. Um, so the way that uh, Final Cut does its filing is, is the library and then you have the event and then under the event you have a project. Uh, the project is what you actually start building your program or your show from. So what I did was I just launched Final Cut. It prompted me, uh, do I want to create a new library or select an existing library? I selected to create a new library. Uh, typically, if you create a new library, you will automatically have a new event generated. So this is, this is the event icon. Um, and you can see that it is an event because it's just uh, the single star. Um, I'm gonna rename this event, uh, JLU underscore waterfall. And I'm just naming it JLU because that's my initials. Uh, and then I'm gonna create a project under this waterfall. So I'm gonna to go to the file up here, go to new and then create a project. I get a dialog box here that uh, asks me if which event I want to place my project in. And I'm gonna make sure and confirm that this is the correct event. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Uh, now you can see I have a icon in here. So this whole square, this whole section here is called the media bin. Now I have a project inside my media bin. I'm gonna rename my project Waterfall. And you can rename things in Final Cut by just clicking on kind of where the text is and then you know, you'll get a little cursor or you can uh, control click, uh, control click on the text and then you should be able to like rename Okay, I guess not, but you can, you can like click on the text slowly and then you, the cursor should come up. So what I want everybody do, to do first is uh, launch Final Cut and then I want you to create a new library called Waterfall. So everybody do that first. <laughs> launch Final Cut. I'll type that into the chat. Launch Final Cut. My computer's not Great. working, so I'm signing off. Um, uh, who, whose computer isn't working? Yeah, it, the password won't, this Sony floor is the password, just keeps, uh, won't let me in. So I'm stuck. Okay. Um, is it not letting you, Tony, is it not letting you sign in or is it not turning on? No, it's on and it says enter password and I put workshop and it doesn't work. It just wiggles. Uh, um, so the, it's the username that's uh, workshop, not the password. So you just put in 
username workshop, and then you leave the password section blank. And that, that well, there is no password. Just above it says Metro East Administration, right? Metro you look East. at the right thing. Oh, okay. Um, sorry. Can you just restart it really quick? A, uh, signed in to. Um, so if you just hold down that um, start button, the black button in the upper right corner, just hold that yeah. down until it turns off and then turn it back on and it should give you oh, okay. username and password. Okay, I'll try it, thanks. It won't go off. Oh, yeah, it goes, okay. So I saw, I just saw in the chat, mm -hmm. I just ty ty typed in the uh, instructions for where we are now, just um, in case folks didn't catch it the first time. Um, so we should be launching Final Cut, creating a library, renaming that library waterfall and then uh, renaming your event waterfall as well. I have a quick question. Where do I save the water? So I've, oh, I've opened the, the library, created the library pod. Into, I'm supposed to save it as waterfall and it says sense of place or footage, basic editing. Where is there a place that I should save it specifically? Users? You, Mac you can save it in you can save it to the movies folder. Okay. And that sh it should it should automatically open, I think, in that folder. Um, because really everything after we're done with this. It did not let me do the um, saving it in the me movies folder. I saved it in the workshop folder and that worked. Okay. That, yeah, that so I don't have works, permission. That works too. You don't have permissions to save it into movies? Yeah. If, if that happens, try documents. Uh, I, I've seen that happen a couple times. I'll try documents. Okay. We're having the same issue. Here. I just have workshop users, Macintosh. Those are my options. Workshop? Yeah, try saving to workshop. Workshop science. Oh, and then there's documents. Okay. File. Library. Um, new. Yeah. Library. Library. We're going to try to save it in another spot. Good workshop. Try saving it there. Now go to, now see if it works. Hello, how do you get to workshop? How do you get into the um, Final Cut Pro? I don't see it here. So um, are you logged in now? Is it is it all past that I'm part? in now, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. you just go to the upper right corner with a little uh, magnifying glass. Um, okay. You click that and you just type in Final Cut Pro. It should uh, pop up in the application, so you just double click it. Okay, thank you. So Jessica and, and Glenn, yeah. I have long, I've got Final Cut Pro open. I, I given a choice of open library, mm -hmm. and I can open this file called Workshop, and I can go. And I can see a bunch of clips that I can't click on, but I'm not quite sure how to make a library. Uh, there should be a button um, next to open that says new on there. Yeah, I see, I see new. I click on new. Yep. It won't do anything when I click on new. Okay. Um, so it just doesn't respond to that or? Yeah, when I when I go up to new, it's up above open library. Yep. New, and then everything's grayed out project event library and nothing happens when I click and they're all grayed out. So I can't click on them. Mm. Oh, okay. So we'll let you create a new library. Um, let me see here. Uh, would it be possible for you to share screens with us really quick? Yeah, sure, I think. Hold on. Right. Hold on. I'll go over here, share screen. I have to turn on my video now, don't I? I, I don't think you have to have your video on. Okay. Um, so can you see what I am doing now? So here's oh. open library, nothing happens. Here's new library and everything is grayed out. I can't make a new library. See, I'm not actually 
I don't you think you're my screen. I don't, no, I don't think your screen is sharing right now. Here, hold on. Maybe that helps. Okay, so share screen again. There we go. Can you see me now? My screen? Uh, no. no. Huh. Okay, go back here. When you click on share screen, uh, do you get an option to, aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. Sorry, there we go. That last step. So Final Cut Pro, see, so here's open library, no choices. New library, everything's grayed out over here. Hmm. So there's nothing to, like I, I can't click on anything. Okay. Um... So I'm wondering if it's because of this. If if you go into the left side, left hand uh -huh. side there, um, yeah. you see how like the where the blue is that it's like a teeth blue. If you click on where the clapperboard is instead on the left, like well, let me click there. Well, let you click there. Okay. Um, try just um, um, stopping Final Cut and restarting it. I okay. Think that's probably it. We hope. <laughs> I'm not letting you stop that. It won't let me quit Final Cut. <laughs> okay. Um, command Option Escape is the uh, shortcut for uh, force quitting something. Oh. It is like the Jedi equivalent of rage quitting. There we go. Oh, boy. On we go. Hi, folks. How do we save this file? We go to new and then save as waterfall it, and then it will, it, there? Is it? It, will, it will save itself. Um, so once you have your library, once you have your library created, you should have an event created as well. Uh, do you have an icon? I don't have a library created. I, I just went to library name, right? It's, it's locate or new. So I press new. new. Uh-huh. Right. And then I put in waterfall. Yes. Okay. And then it says save. It says uh, save as waterfall. And then I put save. Yep. And let's see. Okay. And it says you don't have permission to save file waterfall dot SCP bundle in the folder movies. Okay, so uh, try saving it in documents instead. Okay. So come on. Uh, my choices are save as workshop users or Macintosh HD. Uh, just do workshop, workshop sign. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it, I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I have relaunched. Is it still doing it? Uh, I'm not sure where I am now. Here you go. Okay, so try clicking new and going for all that. Okay. Ah, there we go. Perfect. All right. Amazing. And so what am I doing now? <laughs> Sorry. So you're just going to title it Waterfall? Okay. All right. And, uh, yep, it's, it, it did the thing. So uh, try saving it um, under something else. So I'll click on new again uh, real quick. Appears to be a common thing. So, yeah, call it waterfall again, but this time save it under documents. You got it. Okay, nice. See, but now we all know how to do this, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. We're all, we've all gotten better at it. There we go. Okay. Hey, great. So you, so do you all see um, right now on, oh my gosh, I forget your name. Is it Christine's screen? Is it Christine, is that your screen sharing right now? 
Uh, Catherine? Catherine, yes, sorry. So, so on Catherine's screen right now, she has uh, Waterfall, which is the library. And then underneath that library is a smart collection, but underneath that smart collection is the event. And she will rename that event by clicking on it to rename, there you go. And she will name that Waterfall as well. And once she has that renamed waterfall, hit enter to confirm. Great. Okay, cool. So over to where area where it says import media. So this whole box area is actually the media bin. So this is where all of our media is going to go. We're actually not going to quite import any media quite just yet. But what we will, oh, just close that. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. I know the urge is great. Um, what we're going to do first is create a project. So go ahead and go to file. Get a new file. What the hell? Oh, just go to a new cat. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. And, words, and oh, then go oh. to project. Great. And then you want to make sure you see right under project name, there's a little um, tab that says in event. You want to make sure that it is in the event that you're intending. So we want this to go into the waterfall event. So that's correct. And we're going to rename that project Waterfall. Okay. Yes. Cool. And now we have a, uh, that icon that just popped up in the media bin is a project icon. So does everybody's screen look similar to this? You have a library called Waterfall. You have an event that's renamed Waterfall. And then you have a project created in your media bin. Yes. Awesome. Abigail, do you ha does your screen look like that? Yes. Oh, okay. Great. Mm -hmm. and yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Lucy, does your screen look like that? Or Lucia? Or Karen? <laughs> If you don't want to answer with voice, you can also use the little uh, reaction icons. All right, yeah, thank you. Great. So Clark, uh, do you also have, does your screen look like this screen here? Exactly. Oh, perfect, yes, great. Oh, yes, but, we're all- we're, But now we're I can't get you, and now I don't know what happened to my Zoom on the computer screen, it disappeared. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, on your computer screen, it disappeared. Yeah, it's so weird. And then when I click on the uh, Safari icon, it doesn't come back up. I'm getting this stuff from my like files menu or my finder menu. Do you have oh, there a, you go. A okay, now it popped up. Okay, okay cool. Okay, great. So now that we have our files all set up nice and good, we are going to import some media. So Catherine, if you can actually, you can uh, either, so there's three different ways you can import media. You can either go to file, and then go to import and then go to media. You can hit command I, which will open a import media dialog box. And then the other way is you can actually control click and then select import media. You can just control click somewhere on the like file area. Catherine here is bringing up the import media screen. Uh, Catherine, can you go to, you see that little, uh, um, drop down bar that says desktop. If you scroll down, if you move your cursor down, oh. yeah, right there. Yeah, and then you can you go to uh, users. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try to find where these <laughs> these videos are. Um, Len, do you remember which folder we had dumped them in? Uh, yep. So they'll be in the movies folder. So that should be under workshop. And if you double click on that, it'll expand. Yep, movies, and there you go. And then Final Cut. Okay, so open that Final Cut folder. Open basic editing. Open footage. And then open uh, sense of place. And then 
uh, we're going to actually import all of those. So I believe there should be, you can import all by, uh, if you scroll all the way to the top of this file list, uh, uh, stay inside the list, yeah. So you click clip number four, just click it once. And then if you hold shift and then click another file, it'll actually select all of those files uh, that you are holding shift for. And, and you can actually select multiple of them um, and you don't have to click on them one by one. You can actually like, start on clip four, scroll all the way down to the last one while holding shift and then select it to click all, to select all. Okay. Okay, great. So then on the lower right hand corner, select import all. It's like that little uh, periwinkle blue color icon. Awesome. Perfect. So now what we have is Catherine has actually populated her um, media bin with some media. So I'm actually going to, um, maybe I might, I might take the reins here on driving. I'm just going to import the files one more time. And then I want to show you all some really uh, handy kind of previewing um, uh, tools that we can do. So um, I'm going to boot Catherine off the screen share here. Hi. <laughs> and I'm sharing my project. Can you all see my project? It should be pretty empty. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I'm just going to do what Catherine did all over again. I'm just going to import some media into my media bin in here. So you can either go to file, import media. You can right click or control click in this kind of file section here and go import media, or you can hit command I. So my favorite is command I because hotkeys save tons of time. Uh, so my files in a different spot than yours is. So I have to go and hunt for mine. And Glenn, can you remind us where they are in a, a people's laptops? Sure. So they will be under the workshop folder first, and then it will be movies. And then you should see FCPX training, and that contains all the all the files we're going to be using this time. So. So it'll be basic editing, footage, and then we want to get a sense of place is the folder. So I'm going to show you like a couple examples of ways of importing. So like we saw what Catherine did, she was able to select multiple clips like this by holding shift and clicking. You can also do that instead of like clicking them one by one. I could hold shift, click on clip five here and then scroll all the way to the bottom while I'm still holding shift to and select clip eight so that it selects everything in between. Or if, you know, for example, I know that everything in this file I'm going to use, I'm just going to select that file itself and hit import. Another really cool thing that I, I really like about Final Cut is that I, it lets you preview your clips before you import. So for example, let's say, you know, I was recording a show and, you know, there's 20 minutes of you know, footage that I probably didn't need or a bunch of clips that I just uh, was like my finger kept slipping and I kept hitting record. And I'm just like kind of sifting through um, some of the footage now. Um, so let's say, you know, I wasn't sure about clip five and I just kind of wanted to preview it to see, to see what content was on there. So I can actually place my cursor on the region here. And do y'all see um, that orange bar that's going vertical on the clip? Yes. I can hit the space bar and it'll start playing it. So in this way, I can quickly preview what that peak right there is probably that what clips I want. In this particular instance, I'm just going to select the entire folder because we're going to import the whole folder. So import everything and everything here should show up in your media bin. So if everybody could do that now, uh, just go ahead and import sense of place into your media bin. Hi. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, Glenn is back. Oh, and Tony back. also. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're back. Um, are we on a break right now? Yeah, just like a quick, quick break. OK. So uh, while, while we're here, Tony, you'll want to go back to the waterfall um, event. Uh, that's where we're going from. You good wingman, Glenn. <laughs> what is it, goose? Goose? What? Isn't like yeah? Isn't that like the Top Gun? There's like one of them named Goose. I haven't actually seen Top Gun. I've never, I've, I've never seen Top Gun either. I just know it's like a popular culture thing. So I was trying yeah. to I was trying to fit in and make pop culture references. Oh no! I think of Cyrano de Bergerac as a wingman. <laughs> I went over my head. <laughs> so that rain's been real nice, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. It's like Great. finally. <laughs> Crushed me when it came in, but in a good way. I like it. Yeah, it's great. So it looks like you got transitions and layers and all that done. We're just doing trend. We just got to transitions, and uh, I just went over like B-roll real quick because this okay. group is good. Cool. Cool. Yeah. We might not get to uh, finishing Newt tonight. That's fine. But I think tomorrow will be much smoother since um, we all know <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah, the workarounds. Yeah, I kind of I kind of figured this might be a little chaotic at first, just because of the uniqueness of it, but. Fine, we're getting there. No, yeah, it's great. I think it's actually working out pretty okay. I was kind of scared. <laughs> Where's your picture from, Michael? It's like a like a serious backpack backpacking backpack that was taken on the uh salmon river kind of uh not too far from like welch's oregon and it was oh, a long yeah. time ago but it was a really fun fun day fun picture you know so nice cool i was able to get zoom on the other computer by the way so thank you that was a Yay. really cool suggestion right. yeah Okay, cool. 8.13 and, uh, and we begin again. Okay, great. So does everybody, was everybody able to add a couple of transitions and play around with the um, film strip view here on timeline? Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, similar to transitions, we have some effects that we can play with. Um, and the effects icon looks like this little like outline box in front of a solid box. And it's located right uh, to the left of the 
transition icon, which looks like a little bow tie. So I'm going to click on that. And it's the exact same thing. You can preview. Oh. Glenn, so, so here's like a funny thing. I think I'm not, I don't know why, but every time I try to like preview a effect or a transition, it like Final Cut crashes for me. So I'm not going to try to preview those too much. Okay, and remember to screen share. Okay. Did was it were you all able to preview your stuff without stuff crashing? Okay. Thank you. Um, so again, I'm not going to preview just because I'm afraid it's going to crash and I'm getting frustrated by that. <laughs> um, but what you can do is the same thing. You can um, hover. <sighs> you can hover over the effect and look at what it might look like if you had put it on top of your clip. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to reboot here. Screen share, boot. Okay, I'm just gonna pick a one, one that's like super obvious. Um, bloom. So I just drag and drop that transition. Oh, this is a transition, my bad. Effect. Um, trying to find it. Okay, 50s TV, that's good, very noticeable. So I uh, select the effect that I want, drag and drop it into the clip that I want to apply it to. So releasing, and then I'm gonna move my playhead to where I applied my transition. And now you should see that in the preview here, the effect has been applied and that uh, clip now looks like a 1950s black and white has kind of uh, effect on it. Yeah. So with all these different effects, there are, um, they give you some ability to manipulate and adjust certain things. Uh, and you can adjust those things here. This is called the inspector. And this is kind of where you adjust everything. So um, if you hover, oh, this is like a kind of a handy fun thing to know about Final Cut. If you hover above uh, icons, they'll have a little tab that kind of like lets you know what it does. So this is the video inspector, which lets you adjust and change uh, any parameters that are related to what's going on visually in the clip. Um, this one is the color inspector, so it allows you to um, do some color correcting, um, adjusting exposure and saturation. And then this one is the audio inspector. We'll get into that more um, tomorrow when we do some dialogue editing. Uh, but this is where you would, you know, split your two tracks. Let's say you record, you brought a camcorder to record your program, and you had two microphones, and you wanted to edit those two audio right. tracks separately. This. Purpose to the uh, on which is the video, um, and you can see here there's all the like different things that I can do uh, located in the video inspector. So my connection internet is unstable. Let me know if I start getting laggy. You're a little. Uh, I'm a little bit. Yeah. I might turn off my camera then too. Maybe that will be better. So um, looking at my effects section in my video inspector, and there's all these like different things that I can do. So I can um, change the rotation of my clip, whoa, make it all crazy if I wanted to. And I'm, and I'm doing that by dragging and kind of like moving this little dial around. You can, of course, if you, if you know the exact number, you can of course punch it in. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to zero here. You can choose the scale, which I think, um, I think Clark, you had asked about how to zoom in on a clip. This is one way that you could do it, like zoom in on the actual footage itself. You can bring the scale up or down. There's a kind of better ways of doing it, like using uh, like cropping and stuff, but this is one way you can do it. Uh, and then you can also change the position of your video. So I'm like scooting it, you know, all the way to the left, or you could scoot it all the way to the right. So this, you can adjust your X, Y over here. You could adjust how you crop things. 
Um, you can add stabilization if you need it to, which I typically don't turn this on because I feel like it adds like, can we, it can add like weird artifacts. So I don't really use that. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get into like this cool blending and uh, composition mode uh, when we do our B-roll. But um, so back to the effects. Um, so with our particular, the specific one, the 50s TV effect, we can adjust how, I guess like the vignette uh, on the black and white TV. And then we can adjust the brightness on it as well. So these two are, are specific to this 50s TV effect. So let's say I'm like playing around with it and, I, and I'm like, I don't really know, like, I don't really know if this effect is what I'm going for. Let me just view it without the effect on. There's a little uh, check box here that you can uncheck and then it just turns off your effect. And if you want that effect back on, you can go ahead and just recheck it to turn it back on. So one other kind of really fun thing that I like, um, Oh, actually, let me ask, how many people are familiar with Photoshop and have used layers before? This is very similar to that. Okay, cool. Fantastic. So if you're um, used to using any kind of like um, graphic design software, uh, specifically like Illustrator or Photoshop, then you might already be kind of familiar with how this is working. Um, these are essentially layers that you can, you have control over. Um, so, so for like, for example, this B-roll clip that we plopped on top of this other clip. This is another reason why I like to use B-rolls, uh, B-rolls. <laughs> um, so when I was first like starting to edit videos, I did a lot of like abstract indie music videos. So there was a lot of like overlays and compositing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's why I really like um, B-roll is really handy for that. So let's say, for example, um, I wanted to add some texture to my clip because I'm making like a super moody piece. And I think that this water splashing into the, uh, the waterfall splashing here is like the, per it'll give me that perfect texture that I'm looking for. So I select the clip that I want to manipulate. Uh, and then I go over to the video inspector here. I make sure I'm actually on my video inspector. Uh, this is highlighted purple, so I know that I actually am. And then I'm going to go over here to my compositing section and I'm going to change that blend mode from normal to an overlay. And then now we can see that when I scrub the playhead, do you see how that water is kind of just like sitting on top of that footage that we had before? I mean, maybe it's like too extreme. I will back it up a little bit, back up the opacity a little bit. So. Ooh. So this is um, if that B-roll piece was not there at all. So I'm like bringing that opacity all the way down. And then if I, I can slowly kind of blend that image back in to what I think is the appropriate like visuals that I'm trying to get across. And you can play with different types of things. This is just like the overlay. You can play with soft light. You can play with hard light. You can play with difference. And then this shows you, it's kind of like a negative. And then if I play it on the bottom, um, this original clip will continue to play until the playhead hits this clip on top and then it will play both of those clips. So let me go ahead and hit play. Did you all see that? How it jumps from the overlay back to the first track. Yeah. Cool. So how about we do that? Spend five minutes playing with effects. Um, go into your, so go in, open your effects menu and it looks like these, two, like these, uh, it's located on the right hand side next to your transitions. And the effects icon looks like the little outline square next to the solids or on top of the solid square. Search for effects that you like drag and drop an effect into a clip that you want to kind of manipulate. And then you can open the video inspector and then start playing around with some of these uh, parameters. So go ahead and spend five minutes doing that. Does anyone have questions so far? Yeah, I do. I was up there stuffing my face with a salad and I missed something. So 
I had the inspector up and now it disappeared. How the hell do I get back to it? Yeah, so the inspector, uh, is your window, do you not have an inspector window open? I did, I don't know what happened to it. Okay, I don't know uh, how. What, you can, what you can do, sometimes what happens is like your, your workspace can, can like the view can change. Um, if you go to window, can you see that I'm clicking on my window tab? Hang on, let me try to blow you up a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so now, okay, so where did you click on that window tab at? Uh, the window tab, okay, so let me actually redo my screen share because I, I think I was just sharing Final Cut and not the desk. I should have put this. Let's see. Okay, hold on one sec. So do you see window up here on my screen? Oh. Okay, yeah. And then you want to go show, uh, sorry, uh, workspace, and then select default. And it should bring your inspector back into view. Okay, so you clicked on window, then workspaces. And I have one, I'll see that. You don't have default? Okay, well, when I click on window, I don't see none of that. I got minimize, zoom, and then after a uh, title window, it jumps to like arrange tabs. Uh, Do yeah. you have, you don't have workspaces? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, Glenn? Ah, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. You know what? This, okay, let me try that again. There we go. I was on actually on the um, web page and not the uh, Final Cut page. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so now, uh, dang it, I just lost it. Okay, so Windows, Workspace, and then go to what? And then go to Default. Default, okay, yeah, that's where it is. And then okay. it should bring your inspector. Oh, it in. says nothing to inspect, okay. There we go. If it says then, nothing to inspect, you might have to click the clip itself. Yeah, and that's then what I did. Okay, but then when I click on that little film strip and it turns purple, it just tells me uh, spatial conform. Huh. Oh, it only has spatial conform? Yeah. Are you select, do you have a clip selected? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. Okay, I got it now, it popped up. Okay, so I'm back in inspecting business here. You see, uh, like a transform section, a crop section, distort. Those are pretty basic um, video inspector functions. Okay. So, you see those. so right now I got effects. Uh, and it tells the inner radius, outer radius, transform, crop. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is very similar to uh, like a more souped up version of iMovie. Yes. This is a version of iMovie. <laughs> okay, so now I know what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so, so I've added some effects. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and like search for an effect that you like. And then to put a, to apply an effect onto a region, you just drag and drop it onto that region or that clip. And then if you want to uh, manipulate anything about that effect, you do that in the video inspector, but you want to make sure that your clip is selected before you go into your video inspector. Um, does anybody want to share what they have so far? No. <laughs> It's fun to share. <laughs> yeah, Lucy, Lucia. Well, here, it's going to be like this, but it's fine. Yeah, you could just play it. Just like cram it up to the just, camera. It looks kind of weird, but it's OK. We're not going to say it looks weird. We're going to say it's artsy. <laughs> nice. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the leaf transition. 
very on theme. <laughs> I like the purple. Cool, what was the purple one? Huh? The what was the purple one? Uh, well, it was sideways. <laughs> was, was that a, a clip? Uh, it was a transition and an like, edited photo, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that was cool. I like the color. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Um, so what time does this class end? In half an hour? My goodness. Okay, let's uh, see. I got a one hour. Eh? We're on till 9.30. Okay, okay, okay. I thought it was till nine. I was about to start panicking a little bit. It is till nine. That's what it says on my calendar. Yeah, but in the event um, on Metro East. It says 9.30? 9.30, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, I was about to start like, oh my gosh, we gotta go. <laughs> okay, good. Now I don't feel so rushed. Um, so we just added some effects. Um, okay, cool. So let me close this. Let's just close some real estate here for myself. Um, oh, I'm not screen sharing. Let me screen share. Okay, great. So now what we should have is um, a cute little program, nice and short. Uh, it's a get maybe a little moody, maybe a little artsy. Um, now what we're gonna do is uh, add some sound, some ambient sound and some music to it. So um, each of these clips that I'm clicking on, you can see that there's like a video, a visual section to it and then like all these like weird squiggly lines. These are the audio waveforms. I'm going to uh, bring up my view here of my audio waveforms so I can show people a little bit easier. So there's all these like little squiggly lines. Uh, and when you look at it over here, uh, all this yellow stuff is kind of where the, the volume is getting louder. Uh, if you see any parts that are red, then that means that the audio is clipping or that it's peaking. Um, so the way that we can kind of adjust audio, there's two different ways or a couple, three different ways. Uh, you can do it in Final Cut. So I can select the clip itself. And then when I hover over the audio over here, you, there's like these two little arrows that are like pushing away from each other. And then there's this tab right above it that says, you know, some number and then DB. DB stands for decibels. Um, so right now it's at zero decibels. I can click and drag this bar and bring it all the way down. And then now you can see that there are no squiggly lines on the bottom here because I've turned them all down. So that's one way you can do it. You can do it directly from the clip itself by dragging the volume down, or you can change it through your audio inspector. So just like a video inspector, you have to select your region first and then go into the inspector. So I'm gonna select my clip first and then go into my audio inspector, which is the little speaker icon here. So boop, we're gonna click on that. And then I can adjust the volume here by uh, this slider here. So I can drag and drop. And as I'm dragging this slider down uh, in my inspector, if your eyes are looking at the timeline, you can see that the audio waveforms are also moving down as I turn it down. And then if I turn it up, it also moves up. So that's one way, the slider. And then of course I can adjust my audio by just punching in a number. So I know that I, you know, let's say I was like kind of playing around with sound and then I was like, oh man, I don't really know, like this sounds kind of weird. I want it to be back at whatever it was before I started playing around with it. You can just double click in the um, like values uh, box here and then hit zero to kind of like reset it and then hit enter to confirm. So that's another way to do volume. So one way to do volume is by dragging, uh, clicking and dragging your bar, moving it down, selecting your region and dragging it down, uh, the volume slider. So what I'm gonna do is turn down the sound on all of my clips that's located in my timeline. And then now what I'm gonna try to do is find a clip from our library 
that is ambient audio, and then I will also lay over some music on top of it. Oh, what was that? I heard a friendly ping. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, yes, okay, audio. So I'm going to open my sound library. Um, the sound library is located over here on the upper left hand side, kind of right by where your library and your events are. So where all of your files are. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to click on sound effects or music. Ah, uh, there we go. It's the music. So just like previewing your video clips, you can scrub and preview your audio. So let's say I want to know what this coffee sound sounds like. I can select in the region here and hit my spacebar. Okay, some kind of song there. Uh, or you can uh, play and preview the clip by selecting the little play button. Um, so right now what I'm trying to look for is a sound bite that sounds like a datory forest. Because what I'm trying to do is find one clip that I can kind of just overlay on my whole program and hopefully make it still sound natural. So I'm going to go to sound effects. Oh, nice. I have all these beautiful sound effects. Are you all able to hear the sounds that's coming out of my screen share right now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Um, so let's see, auto skid, probably not, you know, what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm going to maybe, let's do like forest. Aha, forest evening. Evening. I love those crickets. Ah, uh, that sounds nice. Forest stream, river water. I might do that one because it sounds, you know, green. It's got some green sounds going. It's got some water sounds going. Our visuals are water. So for me, I'm going to select this one. I like it. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag my audio clip into my timeline like this. And you'll notice that the audio track sits below the visual track, the video track. So I'm going to um, hit play now to watch my program. So spacebar. There we go. So for me, I would, I would think that like, I kind of, this was really uncomfortable for me. Like we saw the video before the actual sound came in. So what I would do is like throw on a transition there, maybe like a fade. Please don't crash on me. Boop. So I'm going to do a fade, maybe make it ramp a little slower. Hit escape to leave the uh, edit transition view and then hit play bar to preview. Ah, that's a little bit more comfortable. So once I get to this spot, you know, like I kind of feel like in, in, in a video like this, you have, you know, a shot that's like um, a distance shot here. And then you have like an image here where you're so much closer to the water. And then this next shot, you're kind of like, you know, you don't actually directly see any like streams or rivers. So you wouldn't think that the water sound would be super loud. So if I were like seriously editing this, I would take all of these visual things, visual cues into account. So maybe, for example, instead of muting all of these clips, maybe what I would have done was, you know, left this one kind of muted as like the first clip. And then this clip, because I'm going to turn off the effect because it's bugging me a little bit. Oh, just click on it. Which one is this one? Normal. Okay. Uh, and then this clip is like a, a close up. So for me, my brain would think that if I'm visually seeing water that's close to me, then that water sound should be louder. So for this particular clip, what I might do is I might bring the audio up a little bit just so that space, so you have that spatial sound. 
Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead, roll my playhead a little bit, hit the space bar to, to play. So immediately, you know, just by doing some really quick audio tricks, you're really able to create like a dynamic space. Um, so I want folks to do that. Uh, go ahead and go to your sound library, find and play around with some sound effects, find one that you think wor will work well with your program. Go ahead and drag it and drop it into your timeline. Um, and then I feel like I went over another thing. Oh yeah, and then uh, audio. So there are different ways to, to manipulate audio. You can select the clip itself, hover over the audio bar here and drag it to turn it down, or you can click on the clip and then adjust the volume through the audio inspector. So those are the tasks. Play around with the audio inspector, adjusting audio, turning it up and down, go into the library to pick a sound effect, and you can also pick a song too, because that's like the next, that was like the next activity we we're going to do is um, find a sound effect and then find a song. Okay, and then we'll spend like five or eight minutes doing that. Sorry about that. Jessica, um, let's see if you can, can you hear me? Yes. You're muted. yes. Okay, I'm just wondering, I realize I don't think I can hear, can you show me how just to turn the volume on on the, the Mac computer? Oh yeah, so there's, um, there should be a bar like at the top of your keyboard. Oh, okay. Um, and, and there should be like, yeah, it's like a little touch screen. Okay. That's and right. then you should be able to like tap on it and then okay. adjust your volume. Thank you. Yeah, just to make it overly complicated and no buttons. <laughs> I prefer to have like real buttons to press because I'm like, what if something goes wrong? We're too fancy for buttons here. It's too fancy for buttons. We'll spend like another three minutes, let people pick a ambient sound, pick a song, adjust your volume. Oh, hold on. Also, like another really fun and handy uh, hotkey that I like is um, if you Actually, I don't even know where the function key is on my keyboard because I'm using like my other little keyboard. If you uh, hold function and you tap the left or right arrows, 
it will make your playhead jump directly to the beginning or the end of your program. Boop, boop, boop. So those are the ones that I use a lot. I use shift Z a lot, which brings uh, everything into view and then function left or right, which will make my playhead jump to the beginning or the end of your program. Okay, does everybody at this point have a song, have an ambient sound? Does anybody want to share? I'd like to share, but I can't figure out how to get this uh, thing to share. This looks different than the Zoom that I use on my computer. I haven't updated. <laughs> the Zoom, are, are you using, uh, is, sorry, let me in my brain get this right. Um, the computer that you're running Final Cut off of, is that the same computer that you're running Zoom off of? Yeah, I have my uh, video on that, and uh, but I don't see the thing to actually share the screen. I had to go through the website because the app wasn't installed on the computer. Okay, you should be able to, let me see if I can just like click you to share. No, okay. Um, do you see like a little toolbar on the bottom that has like the mute uh, and, and stop video icons? Yeah, I see the headphones, stop video, a little arrow, the chat, and I press the more. I thought I'd find it under that, but it just says disable video receiving. Oh, so you don't have, you don't have like participants, chat. Oh, participants. Uh, and then to the right of that should be chat, and then to the right of that should be screen share. Yeah, it seems, Jessica, that Safari um, doesn't let us, oh, um, we have to problem. like use Chrome, and I've been trying to install oh, okay. Chrome, and I've been trying to install Zoom, but it's a little, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what the issue is. Yeah, it may have to be from the application or the screen share. Um, All of these new things we learn. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry, Clark. That's a brand spanking new computer. It's like, <laughs> it makes my 2018 look old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, does anybody else want to share their um, kind of little program right now? Because we're going to move on to a new project in a little bit. Okay. Cool. So what I'll do is... Oh, I actually forgot to show people this one thing, which I think is super handy. So let me screen share real quick. Oops. Sorry, this is usually like one of the first things that I tell people, but I just forgot today. Um, so to like zoom in and out of um, your timeline, you can hold commands and then do plus minus. So you can hold down command and tap plus or minus to like zoom in and out of stuff. Boop, boop, boop. That's what I'm doing. So that's pretty handy. Um, so just to like tidy up this program, what I'm going to do is just uh, trim my audio pieces, throw on some transitions and put a nice little bow on it. So I brought up my uh, blade tool by hitting B on my keyboard. I'm going to trim this part of the four stream audio because I don't need it. I'm going to trim this part of the uh, music because I don't need that. I'm going to hit A to switch back to my all select tool. And then I'm gonna uh, select the regions that I don't need and then hit delete. Uh, I'm, I, I, I don't really like my music just getting cut off suddenly. Like that. So what I'm gonna do is add a little uh, fade and ramp it down. So I'm gonna hold down command, tap my plus icon to zoom in so that I can see it. Um, and then don't worry about this right now. We're gonna learn how to do these um, like manual fades uh, in tomorrow. But what I'm doing now is I'm dropping these things called keyframes. And this is essentially like automating these um, volume drops. And then I'm gonna bring this down like that. Drag it down like that, like that. And then now when I hit play, it'll just kind of fade out. And what I could do is maybe drag this out a little bit and then find a nice little fade for the end. Create the transition. Oh, sorry. There you go. 
Um, cool. So you got. So now I have like a nice little video about the waterfalls. That was way too long. Let me just trim that because that's like the 30 second. <laughs> Ah, sounds like the beginning of a podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I always think of that song as like the, the like, I don't know, uh, infotainment genre of <laughs> podcast uh, song. Great. So we just finished our first project. What we did is we learned how to import media into the media bin. We learned how to preview things, change uh, the way that our media presents itself, changed um, the way that the media looks like in the timeline. We did some basic uh, trimming. We did some cutting, uh, did some transitions and some effects and played with audio a little bit. So this first project that we worked on was really more like, you know, grabbing a bunch of clips and then assembling it into one program. Uh, the next exercise that we're going to work on is it's going to be one single clip that we're going to have to cut up into little pieces to then build our program. So it'll be more akin to like nonlinear editing. So what we're okay. going to do. Oh, quick question. How do I get my blade off? Oh, so to switch out of your blade, uh, you can hit A on your keyboard, which uh, should switch your tool back to your select tool. Okay, got it. <laughs> or what you can do is um, you can click this little down carrot here, and then you can select any of these tools that you want. I always just default back to the select tool. Okay. Okay, great. So we're gonna move on to our new project. Let's say we finished this one. It's awesome. I'm going to turn this into, uh, I'm submitting this to Travel Oregon for a contest. Looks great. Um, so now I'm going to go back into where my libraries live here. Um, man, I forget what this, it's called a library sidebar. That's right. So I'm going to go back to where my library sidebar is. And then I'm going to go to file. So don't do this quite yet. Just kind of like watch and then see like how I build it. And then I will we'll release you to do it yourself. So again, we're going to create a new library because it's a completely new program. It's a new project. We're going to create a new library. Once we, once, once we create that library, uh, we will get an event and then we will create a project that lives inside that event. So file new library. I'm going to, uh, name this new library Newt. It's saved. And then it should show up here in my folder so, or in my uh, list. So here's Newt on top of waterfall. I'm going to expand Newt. Uh, here is my event. I'm going to click this to rename it and I will rename it Newt. Hit enter to confirm. Go to file, new, create a project. Make sure that I'm creating my newt project inside my newt event so you can see here once i you know you can you can put your newt project in your waterfall event you could do that uh that's not what i am going to do right now but just like know that that option is there so newt and then i'm going to hit okay and so now it, it makes a, a new project called newt and it lives in my media bin so one thing that i um, didn't point out and i usually do at the beginning of class so it's usually easier to demonstrate when like, we're all in person because um, usually we would be sharing computers. But for this, um, I want, this is pretty important. Um, so the project that you're working on, you should always look at the name up here um, because that'll tell you if you're actually working on the project that you want to. So for example, let's say, you know, we had, I, I had, I was working on Newt built this awesome program. And then I was like, oh, but I kind of wanted to uh, work on waterfall real quick. Real quick. Uh, and then I, I'm going to double click on waterfall. So I've double clicked on waterfall. And we can see that waterfall, uh, all the assets up from the waterfall library are currently be being displayed here in my media bin. But if I look in my timeline, I can see that my timeline is still actually working off of Newt. So what you want to make sure 
it's not just to double click on your library, but you need to uh, make sure that this reads the actual project that you're working off of. So I'm going to double click on my project and then you will see this here change to uh, waterfall. So I'm going to double click and it switches to waterfall and I can see my actual project. So beware of that. There has there have been many, many occasions where, you know, I've been like working on, especially if you're working on a show that has like the exact same set or like the exact same kind of look, it, sometimes it's kind of hard to know if you're working on a new episode or not. So just make sure that um, if you are switching between projects, you want to actually double click on your project and make sure that your timeline's name reflects that of your project. So click back on Newt. Okay, great. So now I'm going to import uh, my file for Newt. So I'm going to hit Command I to bring up my media import uh, dialog box thing. And then I'm going to find my Newt folder, which is called continuity. And it should just be the one video. I'm going to import that in here. And now I have that video. So I want everybody to create a new library, name it Newt create a new event, name that newt, and then create a project, name that newt, and then import the folder called continuity. You're muted right now if you're trying to say something. It's all good. Thank you. <laughs> just like flailing with hands. Um, so I was just going to say, um, first of all, thank you. Uh, so, we're, so this pro this particular exercise, what we're trying to do is edit from um, one continuous clip. So for this one, what I would do um, is the other clips when we were playing around and looking at them, I had them kind of like shrunk up like this. So it was easier for me to kind of compartmentalize and scan through every single clip that we had. But because this project, it's only just the one clip, I am opting to kind of be more granular about it. So I'm going to move my um, little uh, X amount of seconds per frame. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. So I'm going to have it set to five seconds per frame just because we're going to be editing probably that granularly. And I think, Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong, because I always feel like, like my version of this is kind of funky, but it's supposed to be four edits. We're supposed to get four edits or four cuts from this one clip. And right. it's supposed to be, huh? Sorry, I was playing my clip and I wasn't muted. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so we're supposed to try to find uh, four edits from this. And the four edits, I kind of think, are like the close-up of the newt. Oh, it's not scrubbing. That's why. The, the close-up of the newt here. And then we kind of have a cut of like this gal over here by the pond. And she's kind of staring lovingly at her new best friend. <laughs> and then she's thinking, oh, I really should be kind and release it, you know, bring it, put it, put it back where I found it. And then she bends down and then bending down some real shaky camera work that will not need. And then a nice close up of the newt. It's, it's a, is it a, was it not a newt? Hey, Jessica, she thinks she deleted her project or her video. Oh. Uh, the which one? Um, the, the one. Waterfall. The waterfall. The waterfall one. Um, 
do you, when you open, when you click on your library, your waterfall library, is this, is your waterfall library still there? No, I, I think I deleted it. It's fine. No. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. But do you know how to retrieve deleted libraries? Mm -hmm. uh, it should still be saved in the spot that you initially saved it in. So if that was documents or workshop or wherever it was. Yeah, Lucia, you might be able to go to file, open library, and then open your waterfall library. Okay. I feel like it, it's got to be somewhere. And if it's not there, it's probably like nested somewhere, like the, the um, session itself will be living in like either the workshop or the documents um okay a, a, uh, what is it even called folder folders yeah sorry <laughs> my brain is there a place a way to go to recent or uh like um recent? do you have anything in your open library wait wait what's that lucia look is that it so everybody right now should be, um, you know, uh, creating your library, renaming a newt, make that event, rename that newt, create your project, rename that newt, and then import uh, the, the file called continuity. I actually think this is a salamander, but I don't know. It's pretty cute, though. Thank you. I forgot, how do I turn scrubbing back on? Oh, yes. Yeah. So scrubbing is uh, located over here oh. uh, on the upper right-hand corner, like right above your timeline. I see it. And then it's the icon that's like the two kind of squares bump, bumping up against each other. Okay. And, then, and then the one right next to that one is to turn on and off your sound for scrubbing. Thank you. Yeah. So for those of you who have your, uh, the file in the media bin, uh, what I would recommend you start doing is um, just watch the clip and then kind of pick out where your four cuts would be. So I'm gonna start doing that on my own over here. Uh, and I'll see y'all in like a three right, minutes. I'm gonna go back. Hey Jessica, I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, I, I can't do the preview anymore when I am up in the... Um, up in the media file section, like when I want to preview, I have the hand, it just a little media, a little like film strip pops up when the, when I click on it. Um, can you do a screen share? Yeah. Nice. Yes. So it, I can't move it and see it. I'm not sure what, can you I'm gonna see go that? Back. Sorry, I'm adjusting my screen so I can see. Okay. Oh, so you have, um, you don't have your scrubbing turned on. Um, so do you see, uh, go, go all the way to your right? Release. Yeah, click, click that. Yes, that oh. one. Uh -huh. And then you should be able to scrub now. But, uh, it, is that, should I press the space bar to scrub? Or? You, should, you shouldn't need to use the and space release. bar to scrub. Um, uh, maybe you have your hands tool. That's on. what I, I, I'm, okay. I know what I'm doing. I just need to have, okay. I'm used to a different kind of mouse. So I had one finger and then I was using my other finger. So I should just have, okay. Oh, another thing about, are y'all using these mouses? These white ones? I, or I your own? think we gave out my, my. Just using the pad, the, the one on the. Computer. Oh, the, the track pad. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. If people are using these mouses, like the ones that we give out, 
The uh, mouse actually also acts as a trackpad here. So you can actually like swipe on the mouse when you're in the timeline or when you're looking through files to like scroll. So you can actually scroll by going like the side to side or up and down on if, if you got one of these mouses from us. So I'm gonna um, keep building my little program. My little program. I love everyone. But should I still know this? I'm just gonna turn off my audio. So, that... so while I'm editing the, for this, I'm trying to like, you know, while I'm previewing and scrubbing in my clip here, I'm trying to find the sections where there's least shaky camera the most stability. Jumping out in there. And I'm trying to find the spot where it's not all shaky. Sorry, I turned mine off. <laughs> Glenn, is this four cuts or three? Um, I think you can do it in as little as three. But. I do it usually in three because I feel like but I think Lauren does it as four. Depends. As long as it's like a smooth cut, basically, is normally what I go for. Yeah, me too. Ooh, shaky. That's not good. Jessica? Yeah. I am having trouble uh, scrubbing because I only have grabby hand and I can't seem to turn him back into scrubber tool. Um, can you switch to your uh, hit A on your keyboard? Does that do help anything? Does your hand turned back, turn back into a arrow? No, it did not. Hmm. So when you are in your media bin trying to grab stuff, it's the grabby hand and not the arrow. It's the grabby hand and not the arrow. Uh, Glenn, do you know uh, what's up? Um, Why it's grabby hand. So. Oh, so. So it's just not letting you grab the clip. Um, yeah. Well, it just, it's just, it, it only gives me the hand and I can't scrub with the hand. Okay. Um, can, so, so um, back down where you select like blade and all that, um, uh -huh. are you able to turn it back into select instead of hand? Oh, hello. That was, it. well, no, it's still a hand. Damn it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Connect. No, still a hand. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's also a shortcut to bring it down. Um, um, do you possibly, is it possibly a hand because you have something highlighted? It could be. Ooh. You might want to like click somewhere, like double click somewhere outside in that media bin somewhere in the gray and okay. then see if you can. So if, um, Man, I really wish I could like zoom in on the actual desktop, but 
if you look at my screen real quick, do you see, it's kind of hard to see, but do you see the yellow box here? Uh -huh. So when my cursor is in that yellow box, it turns into a grabby hand. Yes, and I have and so, a yellow box around everything, yes. Yes, so that is why uh, your grabby hand is everywhere. So because you have selected everything. So to unselect everything, you can um, just click somewhere outside in the gray space in the media bin, and then the yellow highlight should go away, and then you should be able to. Oddly, it's not. Ah, I can make the entire thing disappear. But then clicking outside in the media bin is not making the hand, the yellow box go away? Oddly, no, I'm sorry. Or at least- No, no, it's not, it's not your fault. It is my fault somehow. <laughs> Does it dim when you do that at least? Or is it- It's got the yellow border. Maybe if I hit escape. Yeah. I don't know. Can you try hitting like I and O to set your, um, to like re kind of move the square somewhere else? Because when I hit I and O, I moved the square to this section and then now my mouse is like a, a cursor. Yeah, I, do, I can definitely move the square. Let's see if I can get it. I and then over here. And yes, the arrow is back for that. Yay. Kind of. So you might have to adjust, you might want to adjust your view for like how you're seeing your clip in your media bin okay. so that it's a little bit more uh, manageable. Okay. Time is it? Nine, ten. Okay, cool. Yay, we're going to finish. Okay. So I'm going to um, look at my program real quick and kind of just tighten it up a little bit. Is this some shaky shake here? Oh, that's very sudden. Bye. Freedom. Okay, so my cut, I made three cuts <laughs> for mine. Uh, has everybody right, go back? Has everybody picked their um, three or four cuts or made the three or four cuts? Go ahead and get ready to release. Nice, thank you. Here's somebody still editing. So we'll just do a few more minutes. We'll let the uh, people finish a few more minutes. And then what we'll do with this to kind of like finish up the evening is to do the same thing we did um, the last activity is to just uh, apply some music uh, and ambient noise. But this time what we're going to do is source the ambient noise from the original clip. Because what we did the last time around was we were just searching for a sound effect in the library. Um, but this time what we're going to do, so let's say you, you know, worked on a show or uh, you're working on a production and um, you can't find any good ambient noise. Um, usually you can ask your sound recorder for the room tone. Uh, a, a sound recorder would usually um, record like 60 seconds or a minute and a half of like just the room or the space itself so that that audio can be used as ambient sound. Um, is everybody at a good spot for us to continue forward with uh, adding some sound? Yes. Awesome, thank you. Great, so we have our beautiful uh, National Geographic worthy uh, program going on here and we're gonna add some soundscapes. Um, so let's say, you know, we're like search through our library and man, I really can't find uh, that ambient sound that really works well for this. Piece. So what I'm going to resort to doing is turning back, uh, going to the original uh, footage itself and then pulling some audio from that. So what I'm going to do is uh, play the long clip, the original clip and try to uh, identify like 40 seconds to a minute of background sound that I think can be easily looped. So when I say easily looped, 
Uh, you don't want uh, to grab a piece of audio that has like really distinct bird chirping because if you only have like 40 seconds of a, of a bird chirp, that's going to be looping and people are going to hear that specific bird chirp like every 30 seconds. It's going to be very obvious that it's a, a loop. So you want to try to find something that is just going to be really, it's going to be a nice soft bed against your program. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit play uh, and listen to what, uh, what I can maybe grab. All right, I'm going to go back. So what I, one of the things that I really like about dropping the I and O, so the in and out points, or like this method of selecting either audio clips or, uh, or a visual, is I can actually just like play, let my preview play, and then hit I and O as that cursor is moving. So I don't even have to stop it. So for example, I'm going to reset my thing here. I'm going to make this, this selection. I think that this kind of like few seconds of audio will be really nice against my program. So I'm going to just before I make that selection, I'm going to uh, put my cursor or my little scrubber here. I'm going to hit play and then drop my in and out points uh, when I hear them. So I'm going to hit play. Don't want that sound. That's nice, I'm gonna hit I, I'm gonna keep waiting. And that's good, I'm gonna- Go ahead and get ready to release. Start talking. Uh, I'm gonna move it over here and hit O here. Good. So, um, normally I would just go ahead, or one way I could do it is just go ahead and drop this clip in here. So this is actually like, the, uh, like a great example of when I would use my favorite function. I, you know, I don't want to spend another three minutes continuously reviewing this clip, specifically looking for this 30 seconds of audio. So what I'm going to do is hit F right now to favorite it. And I know that even if I, you know, select other things on this clip or another clip, I will always know that this point, oops, this point to this point is what I selected for my audio. So one way that you can do it is what we've been doing before. Just go, you could drag and drop your clip into your timeline and um, just play it like that. This is not the best method to do it, so don't, don't copy this, but I'm just showing you that this is possible. And then you can hit play, and then now what we should do is hear, we should be hearing the audio from the bottom track because I've turned down the audio from the top track here. So I'm gonna hit play and you should be hearing just the sound from this one. And then you don't hear any sound from these because I've muted the clips here. So that sounded pretty good to me. It sounded like it fit the space. Um, instead of dragging and dropping the whole clip, what we're going to do is use this fun little function we talked about. So we're going to import audio, or not import, but uh, when we drag the clip into the timeline, we want the audio only. So I'm gonna select this audio only. And then when I click and drag this clip into my timeline, it will be just the audio. But you got to make sure you go back and you switch it to all so that you are, you know, as you are continuing to build your program, you're not just like grabbing clips that are just video or just audio. You want both, unless you don't. But in this case, it's a safe practice to go back to all. And then now when I hit play, same thing but we don't have to deal with the uh, visual uh, component associated with this audio. So now you're thinking, okay, so we have like, we found the audio that we like, now we just have to loop it. I don't know of Final Cut having like a nice loop function. Uh, Glenn, do you know if Final Cut has like a nice loop function? Um, I just copy and paste it. Yeah, I. I think there's a way. It would be in the uh, view settings, I believe. But uh, view settings. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know it off the top of my head. Let me see if I can find it on my own screen here. We'll see if Glenn can help us out. What I do, which is, is just I just uh, select the audio clip that I know I'm going to want to loop. I'm going to hit Command C, which is copy. And then I'm going to move my playhead to the very end of that region, make sure it butts up against. And then I'm going to hit Command V to, oops, oops, sorry, I just kind of moved it. 
I'm gonna hit Command V to paste, Command V again to paste, and I'm just gonna paste that piece of audio up until the end of my program. I'm switching to Blade tool to trim off this last piece of audio, switching back to my Select tool so that I can select that audio to delete it, and then I'm gonna hit Delete, boop. And then I'm gonna jump back to the front of my program to um, play everything. So I'm gonna jump back and the hot key is, uh, you hold down function key and then you hit left arrow. I'm gonna hit play. Okay, so that was like kind of weird. I'm gonna cut that a little bit. Okay, that's better. Um, and I'm gonna move this back over here. Okay, so um, yeah, how about you you all do that? Um, hopefully you all have you know your three or four clips already assembled, and then go ahead and find 30 seconds, you know, however like a short bit of ambient audio that you feel like you can easily loop and will sound good across your uh, episode or your program. And then uh, go ahead and, you know, just drag and drop that audio into your timeline, but make sure to do it using the audio only method. And we are almost finished. Just squeaking by. So as people are working on this, I'm just going to uh, talk about like kind of what we went over in the class today. So the first project we worked on was mostly to get everybody acclimated to using the tools like trimming, using the blade, um, different ways to uh, make selections in the media bin, and then kind of basic functions of building your program within the timeline, which includes applying effects, manipulating effects and transitions, um, and played a little bit with, um, with sound. Uh, we went into the sound library, we played it, we searched for sound effects, previewed music. Um, the first project that we worked on was more like assembling multiple clips into one piece. And then the second project that we are finishing up right now is editing one long uh, piece of footage into a short piece. And then tomorrow what we'll go over is um, adding on text and title animations. We'll go over more uh, into editing audio and dialogue. Um, we'll go over using generators and we'll focus, it will focus a little bit more on like actually editing for content tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna go back. Jessica, did you say that um, that you guys were recording this? Yes. Okay. I think so. I don't know I if we I... still are. I, I know that Glenn, once he hopped off, I think the recording probably stopped. Oh, yeah, we're, we're still recording. I don't know if it recorded the part when I was gone, it, uh, but yeah. I'll find out afterwards. I just, okay. I, I kind of would like to watch the last 20 minutes. I think I've sort of figured out here. Oh, sure. yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I know it's like how many Zoom calls and Zoom meetings like <laughs> do, do we all now have in a day? Also, I, we didn't say this in the beginning of the class. I forgot, I usually always mention this, but stuff that's uh, in the like private chats in Zoom are not actually private. Uh, this is just to let you all know, um, not just for this class, but just like for the future, um, it's not actually private. 
true.